Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up those football guys here on this hope day. The very first hump day of March. And so you know what that means. Tonight, all the ladies in the place with the style and the grace. We are doing something special tonight. It's the off season. It's the off season. Uh, last month, we had a ladies night Zoom in call with, you know, a bunch of the lovely ladies and had, you know, get to know you and stuff. Tonight, we're going to actually do that again, but this time it's going to be a live stream and it's going to get extra live. I got a few uh, interesting questions that I want to ask the ladies, you know, like what is your biggest, what the fuck moment, excuse my language, but just to kind of, you know, it be at with, with a relationship, a date, your kids, you know, one of those times where you were just like, what the F is, yeah, and as well as some other pointed questions. So tune in tonight, nine o'clock Eastern, because we're going to have some of your favorite ladies, you know, Joanne Gonzalez, you know, Gina C, Gina Thorne, you know, Miss Jackie, you know, all the ladies in here, because I know all you thirsty brothers, I know all you thirsty brothers out there will definitely be looking to uh, enter the conversation. So that being said, let's get on to the NF of L. We have the combine, which is going on, of course. Yesterday was day one. We heard from Mike McCarthy, found out that Dak Prescott had shoulder surgery on his non-throwing shoulder. Uh, basically a cleanup, just a little orthoscopic, you know, surgery on it. Just kind of, you know, taking care of little bone spurs or little tear or things like that on his non-throwing arm. Now, a lot of people will say, oh my God, he's breaking down. You know, when you play football, when you take hits, when you go through this abuse, when you work out constantly to get better, you're going to have nagging little things, and it's better to take care of them sooner than later to get it done now and out of the way to be ready for working out is not a big concern. What is a big concern for me is going forward of how to figure out how to minimize the impacts on the quarterback. For me, that's, of course, the offensive line. Now, today, of course, we're getting ready for tomorrow's all-day workouts. Tomorrow will be nothing but everybody working out. The Combine has changed their format because of the COVID situation. Of course, everybody will be working out tomorrow. That's it, tomorrow. So you're going to see your quarterback, your offensive line, your edge rushers, defensive line, your, your wide receivers. Your, everybody is working out tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. I may end up doing it just a, I just may live stream all day tomorrow. I'm just going to watch it tomorrow and probably just live stream and we'll go through it and we'll do some giveaways and things because, you know, hey, it, it's something, okay? It, it's the off season. We have to have something to talk about. But as we go through here, you know, we have Stephen Jones basically not letting his hands go as far as what their plans are on, you know, on some of the big names. We've gotten hints about Amari Cooper and D-Law, the big contracts where they say when you get the big bucks, you get scrutinized more. And, of course, if you're going to pay, you know, Amari Cooper to be a number one, we expect him to get the ball like a number one and so on. We don't know if that's going more towards the coaching or if that's going towards the player. Um, but I'm beginning to feel like Amari Cooper may be actually let go. And, of course, there's all of the, you know, NFL silly season. The Cowboys should tie in Michael Thomas. Okay, all right, I, I hear what you're saying. Or yeah, it, you're getting all kinds of crazy thoughts, ideas, and concepts and things. I, I actually had somebody say, I heard we're going for Julio Jones. What? Okay, be that as it may. The biggest question is, and, and you heard Stephen Jones basically say, you know, Zeke's my guy. You know, we love that guy. That guy plays through injury, and, of course, his contract is guaranteed, and we can't get rid of it. So, you know, of course, what else am I going to say? He didn't say that part, but if you read between the lines, he did. The question is, is, you know, everybody's trade Zeke, cut Zeke, get rid of Zeke, he's done. Is Zeke Elliott really finished? That's my question here. And if we go to the numbers, let's just go through the numbers here right now. And... We look at it, he, he still got 1,000 yards. He still averaged 4.2 yards um, a carry. 
only 58.9 yards per game. Good thing is he only had one fumble. The year before, we had a lot of fumbles. He at least cured the fumbling issue. Now, he played in 17 games. Now, now this is let's go through the numbers a little bit deeper. If we go through on the attempts, because he was actually um, carrying the ball a lot less than uh, because of Tony Pollard. In the past, it was going to be Zeke and all Zeke. Zeke was seventh in the league in carries with 237. So he got the ball a lot. Yardage-wise, he was seventh with uh, 1,002 yards. Um, TDs, he was sixth in the league as a running back in TDs. So he still got to the end zone quite a bit. He got 10 TDs. Uh, Jonathan Taylor got 18. Uh, Damian Harris got 15. James Conner got 15. Joe Mixon got 13, and uh, Austin Eckler got 12. So he's still in the mix. Now, when we go to long, longest run, let's see, where is Zeke, 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 Zeke? Longest run, 25th with a 47-yard run. Ooh, that's not too good. Uh, yards average per carry. This is where it's not good either. Uh He's down here, 4.2, 28th. So if you go by those numbers, you would say, we need to do better than that. I mean, if we look at Tony Pollard, his yard per average is definitely a lot better. So it would say to you, we got to play Tony Pollard more. Now, and, and I'm not disagreeing with that. But what you have to look at, too, is the situations that... Tony Pollard was put in versus Zeke Elliott. And also how the defense would react to Tony Pollard versus Zeke Elliott. More times than not, if it's short yardage, it's Zeke. You, know, you need a half a yard, Zeke's running the football, not Tony Pollard. In which case, that's going to bring down your average sum. You also have to take in consideration that Zeke Elliott played with a torn PCL in his knee for more than half of the season. People don't want to actually put that there and take that into consideration, but it's really easy to think that you could have been shut down for that injury right there. You also have to take into consideration, forget about pro football focus's end of the season ranking and literally saying that the Dallas Cowboys offensive line was the best offensive line in football and named their, the five starters that most of them missed at least half of the season from Tyron Smith to Lyle Collins and so on. The Dallas Cowboys offensive line, to me, is, is hurting. You cannot look, and, and people have a perception because there's a perception and then there's reality. The Dallas Cowboys have always been known for having a great offensive line. And you can look from the time we started getting Tyron Smith, um, Travis Frederick, and Zach Martin, you could look and say that, yeah, this is another great offensive line. But from the time we lost Travis Frederick, this offensive line has been missing tremendously. And when you look at the hopes that we had for Connor Williams to be, you know, a great guard, Connor Williams never really panned out. And the other thing that has hurt our offensive line tremendously is you know, the penalties. Dallas Cowboys are the most penalized team in football. People will always want to go ahead and say quarterback, head coach, and things like that as, and, and put the blame instead of actually getting down to the root cause of problems. Zeke Elliott has slowed down. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But he's still got 1,000 yards, still got 1,000 yards, was still a very effective blocker on one leg, still averaged 4.2 yards when the offensive line was terrible. Make no mistake about it. We went into the season where Terrence Steele, a guy who most people wanted to say, don't ever let him start again, who ended up becoming the starter week two at right tackle and actually played great. And in my mind, is the third best offensive lineman we have when everybody's healthy. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe Terrence Steele is a better tackle than Lyle Collins is currently. 
he got comfortable at right tackle. And this is the thing that people don't understand. If you've never been an offensive lineman, or if you've never played football, you don't understand what it's like when you change offensive lines on a weekly basis. For then Lyle Collins to come back cold, having to play right tackle, and now Terrence Steele, who is still, you know, get his ears wet, now has to play left tackle, which is totally different. And if you don't think it's different, try writing with your right hand and then see what it's like when you write with your left hand. That is, if you're right-handed. That's what it's like going from one side to the other. Everything is reversed. You're used to everybody coming when you're on the right-hand side from this side. You're used to taking that first step with the right foot. You go to the left side, now everything is on the left side. That first step is with the left foot. And you're facing the best player on that defense, on that left side. So to go from the right to the left, boom, and put in Lyle Collins. Now you got two positions that are now an issue. Your center, he plays the, the titty games where he gets too high. He gets bull rushed, and he's like he's on skates. And when your center gets called, I think, three times for offsides, that's a problem. That's a problem. We must get the center together. And then with Connor Williams, Connor Williams again, he's not a road grader. And we must get a road grader. We must get a center. So if, hypothetically, I'm not going to say that Zeke Elliott's going to be a 2,000-yard rusher. I'm not going to say that. But if you can just improve the offensive line, and Zeke gets that knee taken care of. You can look at Zeke Elliott being about a 12 or 1300 yard running back next year again. The holes were not there. Flat out. The holes were not there the second half of the season. From the time Tyron Smith went down, and you can look at the numbers. You can look at the numbers after week seven. The running game went to crap. And the thing about the Dallas Cowboys in this offense is, and it doesn't matter, you can blame Dak all you want, and that's fine because you're short-sighted and you don't look at the history of this offense. The years that this Dallas Cowboys offense has done great things, and that's with Dak, that's with Romo, that's with Troy Aikman, the offensive line, and the running game were there. And that's a fact. When the offensive line has not been, and when the running game is not there because the offensive line is not making holes, and believe me, if Zeke Elliott last year was running through the holes that Emmett Smith had, you would have seen 1,500 yards. Those holes don't exist as we are currently constructed with the Dallas Cowboys. And we must get that fixed. We need a road grader at guard. Now, the problem, of course, in today's NFL is you can't fix everything at once. I still believe one's got to go. Tyron Smith or Lyle Collins? Lyle Collins, I would move to guard. I would put Terrence Steele on the right. I got my man, Zach Martin. Now I got to worry about right tackle, excuse me, left tackle, and center. And I'm getting the best player offensive line wise in the draft. It's a deep draft for offensive linemen. And I think this is how the Dallas Cowboys get together and get themselves. Um, my final thought on this is, and, and I want you to understand this. I played offensive guard in high school. I played nose guard in college. So I understand the importance of the line. You will get the biggest bang for your buck the line. You can have a great wide receiver, but if your quarterback is on his ass, it doesn't matter because he can't get them the ball. You can have a great running back, but if there's not holes to run, it doesn't matter. You get an outstanding offensive lineman that gives your quarterback more time to throw the football, that can open up holes. It helps the whole offense quarterback now has the time for that receiver to break free and get open and to be able to see him and hit him 
you've got holes now for a running back that's aging that can get through. And that's what the Cowboys must do. We have all the doom and gloom. Oh, Kellen Moore is terrible. And, you know, Amari Cooper is awful. You know, and, and, and Zeke Elliott's old. I'm telling you, every issue starts from the offensive line. Fix the offensive line. You'll keep Dak upright. Zeke Elliott's numbers will increase. You'll have more time to throw the football. And you'll be able to win more games. It's not rocket science, people. It's not. It's what you must do and understand. We have done this over and over and over again. We wasted Tony Romo's career because we didn't understand that. We kept focusing on, oh, we got to get the Joey Galloway. Oh, we got to get the T.O. Oh, we got to go ahead and, and trade for, um, uh, geez, from Detroit. We got to get the wide receivers. And then they went Kmart shopping for offensive linemen. And it directly correlates to Tony Romo's career ending earlier. You must take care of the line. It's the big nasties that win you championships. So we're going to go through and we're going to finish this up. We're going to listen to the cow turd. And he's going to talk, of course, about what else? The Dallas Cowboys. What you got to say, Colin? So here's something else. Shift. I, I just can't. I, I, I try. I try. I try. It's bash the Cowboys. You know, you, you could say the same thing about the Green Bay Packers. Number one seed against that same team that beat the Cowboys. And they lost too. And so on. But, you know, in some regards, we need to be ridiculed. We need to feel this pain. If you ignore things that have happened in the past, you will be destined to repeat them in the future. And I hope actually that Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and all that realize the mistakes that they made and we do something different about it. We can always have the hope, and I'm always going to be a Dallas Cowboy fan, and maybe in, in essence that's part of the problem because we're always going to be fans, wins, lose, or draw, and we, we're just getting the losing part of it more than anything else. So with that being said, I'm going to get up out of here. I've got work to do in the workshop. i got to go by and take care of stuff with my parents and things. But, of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on everything that is going on. We've got the New York Giants literally having a fire sale. They're basically saying, anybody in our team, anybody that you're interested in, pick up the phone. Give us a call right now because we're ready to wheel and deal. We have Green Bay Packers saying, Nobody's given us any offers for Aaron Rodgers, so pick up the phone. Give us a call. We can negotiate something right now. And you also have the Washington football team with 42 possible quarterbacks that they're interested in. And they're saying, we're going to pick up the phone. We're going to give you a call. Because that's the way it is right now in the NFL. And uh, I hope to see you guys tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, for our ladies' night. We're going to hot sauce it up. And you know how we roll. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report.